1990, a civil war flared up between the Rwandan Patriotic Front, the RPF, made up mostly of exiled Chinese, and the Hutu-led government army. A ceasefire was brokered in 1993, and a power-sharing agreement was signed by then President Tabiri Mora. But over those years, that neighborliness in Indonesia's community had begun to erode. Suddenly, the Hutu changed the fact they became angry on us. We were hearing the propaganda which was spoken on the radio that all Tutsi will be killed. They should be exterminated. Were you scared? Yeah, of course I was afraid to worry what my husband. And at that time, I asked him, please let us pray and ask God to protect us. And uh, the day where we took time to pray, it was the day they came to put him into the prison. Why was he arrested? All intellectual Tutsi, they were called uh, to contest of the Tutsi who were outside. They said they are working together to fight against the government, they accused him because he was working in a mine and he was going to exploit the cement company. Uh, it was just a false accusation in order to put him into prison. Charles was charged with sabotage. His job meant he had access to explosives in the mines, and the authorities accused him of working with the RPF to put them to use. Denise's first child was a baby then. Six months later, Charles was released from prison, but he was fired from his job. The atmosphere had become toxic. Hutus and Tutsis, who had once been neighbors, friends, and colleagues, were now enemies, and people were disappearing. Charles didn't feel it was safe for him to stay in Bugarama, so he fled to the capital, Kigali, about 180 miles away. Denise was heartbroken. Her husband would visit in secret when he could, but he had to sneak in at night and leave before sunrise. Denise had a second child, and then, a couple years later, she got pregnant with her third son, Rastidia. The pregnancy itself was going fine, but the mounting tension and violence made what should have been a happy time terrifying. Everywhere they were killing physically, I was not sick, I was healthy, but uh, inside me I had more fear and worry how I will give birth when my husband is not there. On April 5th, 1994, Denise said goodbye to her husband for the last time. I remember he told me, now I'm going to leave. I had a feeling of big problems which I'm going to face. And uh, I cried and he embraced me and uh, he could not do nothing and uh, he told me, I love you, and he went. The following day, something happened that took the bloodshed and fear to another level. President Juvenal Javier Romano of Rwanda and President Sipin and Tariyamira of Burundi were returning to a meeting of African leaders in Tanzania. At 9.30 in the evening local time, two loud explosions were heard, and the plane carrying them and six other people crashed in flames. The same gunfire and grenade explosions started in the center of town just before dawn and are continuing. The killing started immediately. Hutu extremists blamed RPF militants for the attack on the plane and started a systematic campaign of murder against Tutsis and moderate Hutus. The RPF said the plane had been shot down by Hutus to provide an excuse for what quickly became recognized as genocide. I've seen some of the most terrible things today that I've ever seen. It's been absolutely horrific. The killings, the random killings, the soldiers going around in groups of youths armed with knives. And then on April 16th, nine days in, the slaughter came to Denise's door. It was a sunny day, and I woke up early morning. It was normal to listen even to the news. I had a, a good neighbor. She was a Hutu, 
and she used to come to do shopping for me. She came t- morning and um, I gave her money. She went to the market and when she came back, oh, she came in hurry and uh, telling me the news. I came from the market. I saw your aunt Priscilla, her two boys, her uh, father-in-law, they lie down. They were killed and I had uh, the killers, the inter the militias, saying that they are coming to you to kill you and all Tutsi neighbors. And uh, oh, when I heard the news, my heart was painful and I know that we are going to be uh, killed. Denise knows she doesn't have any time to waste. On autopilot, she thanks her friend and takes off to warn another neighbor and the relatives that were living with her at the time. And then suddenly we heard a big noise crowd of people were running. We heard about the shooting and uh, my cousins, my children were around 10 people. I told them we were going to be killed. We went in the corridor. We did not know how the militias who to will uh, attack us. We thought maybe they would have thrown the grenades in the house. And then we lay down, we spoke about uh, forgiveness. We, we pray the last prayer. I told them, for those who will be killed, we will meet in heaven. They could hear the cries of their neighbors and they knew the militias were getting close. So they went to hide in different rooms of the house. And my firstborn went in the guest room with my house helper. And I took my, my refuge into the bathroom. I had my second son on my back. I said, God, you disappointed me. Why you never tell me the truth that you'll be killed? After that, I lost all my fear. I just heard how they destroyed the place.